Hey, Rick Force here at topvelocity.net. I wanted to put this pitching velocity quick tip together for you to go over something that's really kind of uh, revolutionary when it comes to understanding how to become an efficient and, a, and a, an effective pitcher, and that is learning how to use the kinetic chain. <clears throat> so what is the kinetic chain? The kinetic chain <clears throat> is basically the link of joints from the ankle to the knee, knee to hip, hip to shoulder, shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist. That link of joints creates what we call the kinetic chain. And more efficiently using that, which would be basically generating the forces in the ground, because that's where forces are generated. Um, if we know Newton's laws, forces, or his third law, where if there's an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the force we push into the ground, we get the equal force back. That starts the energy. And then if we understand the chain, we can move those forces up the chain effectively. We can even multiply those forces in the pitching delivery to accelerate the forces all the way up to the ball and be able to throw the ball at a high rate of speed, uh, which is actually the fastest human movement ever recorded in the laboratory. So it's a very sophisticated process if you want to do it in a high level, but the only way you're truly going to do it is learning how to use the kinetic chain. Now, the reason I want to give this to you and the reason this is important to you is because if we look how pitchers are taught at a young age and also the challenges they face, which is most young pitchers don't have a lot of leg strength, don't have a lot of core stability, don't have a lot of joint integrity. They struggle with using a chain link system because it's very dysfunctional when they're immature or they're not developed. So it, 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 not only that, but they typically aren't being coached well, and we'll go over some of the things that kind of take them down the wrong road. And it creates pitchers that I find at my 3X velocity camps that come to me basically pitching backwards, or pitching the opposite way that the body or the chain is built to move uh, correctly or efficiently. And I'm going to go over that. So typically, if we, we look at an example of a pitcher that wasn't coached correctly, they were coached to start the movements up the chain, later in the chain. So they don't really generate a lot of forces down below. They typically, because they don't generate a lot of forces, their upper body mechanics become or start to overcompensate for the lack of forces that were built. So that's really where things go wrong because they don't have the leg strength, they don't have the leg power, they don't have the joint stability to move the forces up the body. So they don't become dynamic in the lower half, so they uh, don't generate the forces needed to put or accelerate those forces efficiently and effectively in the ball, so they wind up having to overcompensate. So what are the things we see for overcompensation? Actually, before we go into overcompensation, what are some of the things we see that give us an indication that there's not enough force being generated in the lower half? Well, that would be a pitcher coming into his lift and reaching out with the front leg and quickly putting down. Right there tells you that this leg obviously didn't generate much force because it's still down. And this leg, the only forces it generated was, was the, the, the slight little fall and shift of weight. When we look at the pictures that throw at the high levels, that throw at high velocities, we see the drive movements, the linear movements, and therefore we know they're landing harder, and not only do they land harder, but they actually extend harder in the picture leads. Indications that there's more force production being generated. And when you have more force production in the lower half, then you don't feel like you have to overcompensate. Okay, so I said things that give us an idea that there's no forces being generated would be a reaching front leg, would be just falling off the mound, not accelerating your speeds, would be not lowering your center of gravity, would be just standing tall, okay? Would be kind of, um, you know, that slow controlled movements, not a dynamic athletic movement. Those would be indications that there's not enough, there's not enough forces being generated in the lower half to effectively transfer the forces up the chain. So here comes the overcompensation. What are things that become overcompensation? For those pitchers are typically starts with the glove side. Well, you'll see them wanting to pull the glove side early, wanting to pull the glove side hard, wanting to pull the glove side in. Now we have studies that show low velocity pitchers have more left to right movement on the horizontal plane. They want to pull the glove side. They want to pull it hard to initiate the shoulder rotation. That's not an efficient way to use the kinetic chain because energy comes up. So pulling the glove to pull the shoulder around is not the way it's going to was built to efficiently move. It was more efficiently built to move downstream, upstream, meaning the, the hips driving through, 
faster than the shoulders can catch up. And then that would cause the shoulders to accelerate and that pulls the shoulder around. So that's the efficient way to move using the kinetic chain and bringing the forces up the chain. So once you, if a, if a, if a player is being coached to pull the glove side, he's being coached to overcompensate, or if he doesn't have the lower half power, then he's being forced to use the glove side to pull the shoulders around. So that's typically where things go wrong. You see the pitcher, you know, just fall to front foot, reach to front foot, and then pull the glove side. Now you'll know, you know, a lot of you might be thinking, well, when I watch pitchers throw, it looks like they're pulling their glove side. If you watch a high velocity pitcher throw, they're not pulling their glove side. What they're doing is they're hitting front foot, their glove side is still in line, okay? If you if you looked at something in the video behind them, say a fence post, look where that fence post is lining up to their arm and watch when they turn it over, the only thing that's happening is their chest is going to their glove. They're not actually pulling in. They might be pulling in a little bit, but not dramatically like we teach young kids uh, to do, which causes that, that overcompensation. So high velocity pitchers are not pulling their glove sides in um, um, you know, violently. They're just turning them over and tucking them as the chest moves in to the upper body. So if we coach that, we coach overcompensation. Because like I said, it's forcing you to pull your shoulder around and it doesn't work with the kinetic chain coming upstream where the hips are driving the back shoulder around. Okay, so that's, that's the efficient way to movement, uh, to create the movement. This is the inefficient way to create the movement. Another place we see overcompensation, and this is really at the end of the chain, and it's really where we're doing things backwards. It's when the kid goes to the shoulder rotation, and there's no load on the arm, because the arm is being pulled around, the, the glove side is pulling the shoulders around, so there's no load on the arm, so the arm has to continue to pull down and reach out, and that's that, that old school mentality of you gotta, you gotta pull down and pick up dirt, okay? So we're, we're continuing to activate the arm to generate the forces on the ball. An efficient chain, an efficient kinetic chain wouldn't have to do that. If it got the hips to go through fast enough, and left the shoulders behind, and then the shoulders had to catch up, so then they accelerate through fast. And if the arm is already up in an abducted position, it then would want to lay back or externally rotate as that trunk is moving forward. So the forces of the trunk moving forward would help the arm load back and would create a catapult effect. You'd see the arm stretching back into external rotation, and at that point, just like a catapult, you don't have to push the arm forward. It does it for you. The arm then unloads, and what we see, because the forearms unload, we see pronation in the pitch release. So to help you understand how the upper body loads, is we know the arm, the shoulder, externally rotates before it internally rotates. So if you want faster internal rotation and a kinetic movement, you have to get more loaded external rotation. The forearm does the same thing. A lot of people don't understand this because they don't, uh, they've never slowed down video of the forearm, but if the pitcher pronates to release, which is the thumb turning down, that means he had to load into supination. So he had to load the arm with the thumb back. So if you watch pitchers, high velocity pitchers, when they go into extra rotation, their thumbs go into supination. I know it looks weird, makes no sense because you've never been coached that way, but that's what is occurring. The thumb goes into supination, and then as the arm unloads in internal rotation, it unloads into pronation, and it releases the ball into pronation. Now, the difference between a fastball and a curveball is not only just the pitch grip, but it's that the curveball creates a later pronation, but it's the still, still the same arm process. So an efficient chain, you would see, as the trunk goes, the arm next to rotate, the forearm supinate, and then it unloads into internal rotation, supination, and what it creates is an elbow joint that stabilizes into internal rotation, as the thumb pulls down and the arm pops up high, and that's an efficient release of the throwing arm uh, after you know, at, at, you know after the after the pitch. The inefficient release is like what I said, where there wasn't a load, so the arm had to keep pulling forward, pushing out, pulling down, you know, picking up, and that's the inefficient movement. So when you have a pitcher that does that, just like with the glove side. Um, then it has to be re kind of reverse engineered. You have to teach them the chain. You have to teach them the trunk drives the arm, not the glove side drives the arm. 
Then the arm loads, and the more the load, the faster the unload. So there's this little drill we do, and I think this is what I'm going to leave you with, and it'll help you understand how this all works. It's called my external rotation, internal rotation throws uh, from my beginner training program. What you do is you open your chest to your target, you tuck your glove, you put your elbow up to shoulder height, and you let, you let it load and supinate. You want to feel all this load, and you want to use the chain to do it. So push your hips up first, then push your chest out, okay? Or load your, let your chest load up, and then let your arm go back. So it goes up the chain, boom. Up the chain, boom, boom. And if you hit this hard enough, and you supinate this hard enough, boom, it unloads, and you feel everything turn over and internally rotate. If you're a pitcher who's been taught to overcompensate and not use the kinetic chain, then you're going to want to do this. Even though you're trying to throw your arm back, you're still going to want to do that. You're going to pull down and push. And the indicator is in this drill that your elbow keeps going forward. It keeps going forward, keeps going forward. You need to reverse engineer that and teach it not to try to generate the forces late, but generate the loads early and then let those loads naturally throw the arm. So you teach the body to use the chain, load the arm, externally rotate, supinate, and do it quick enough where we have that quick unloading into internal rotation pronation. So it looks like this. Okay? And you'll see the difference. So here's the wrong way. Here would be the wrong way. You'd start pushing out. Here would be the efficient kinetic way. Using the full kinetic chain. Okay? One more. And you notice it's a lot faster. It's a lot more jump on the ball, or in your, in, you feel the ball jumping out of your hand. Okay? So, I know it's a lot of information. A lot of people watching this are probably very confused because you've never been taught this way. But guys, that's science. That's a true understanding of how the kinetic chain will move efficiently through the pitching delivery, which will help reduce stress in the arm because you have more joints sharing the load, and it will help enhance performance because you're not overcompensating, which creates uh, a loss of performance when it comes to something like ball speed. So I hope this helps. Um, I'm going to continue to pump out good pitching velocity quick tips for you. If you'd like to uh, check out the 3 programs and learn more about these pitching programs and the science behind this and how to implement this in your delivery to increase your velocity and reduce your chance of injury, check out the programs or come down and work with me in the 3X Velocity Camp.